The Dallas Car Sharks reality television series was one of those automotive-themed shows that Motor Trend Network, formerly Velocity Channel, banked on to help their network move up the ladder of the highly competitive TV ratings. It made its TV debut in 2013 and contributed to Velocity's rise to 46th place in the male viewership demographic with ages 25 to 54, along with their other TV shows such as What's in the Barn and Phantom Works. The network was able to get past 22 competitors, including MLB Network, The Golf Channel, and NBA TV. Dallas Car Sharks stayed on the air for three seasons, ending in 2015. Fans were surprised at its cancellation, but there were theories as to why the network pulled the plug, including a lawsuit filed against its production company for breach of fiduciary duty and allegations of phony narrative. So, what was Dallas Car Sharks all about? When automotive reality TV shows became such a ratings magnet, Moto Trend Network explored many possibilities and created more original shows focused on auto restoration or customization. With many competing shows out there with the same concept, the producers of Dallas Car Sharks tweaked the narrative a bit and introduced a different way of presenting its content. Instead of creating scenarios in which they had clients dropping by the auto shop to have their vehicles upgraded, they gathered four competing car dealers in the Dallas area and let them outbid each other in the car auction circuit. Their goal was to acquire the car that they could restore or customize and hopefully then flip it for a huge profit. They also got bragging rights for having the biggest payday haul in the local automotive dealership restoration community. The four competing car dealers along with the auctioneer made up the main cast of characters in the TV show. All of them were quite competitive and did everything they could just to get the vehicle that they wanted during the auction. Now meet the cast members. The expertise of Tommy Spaniola of Texas Motor in spotting which vehicles could be fixed and flipped and then bidding on them in an auction house was what made Texas Motor Cars one of the top used car dealerships based in Addison, Texas. Tommy built the business from the ground up from when he was 16 years old and since then has been providing affordable cars around the area. Customers were pretty impressed by the overall look of his facility, with all his hot rods displayed in the garage, along with vintage neon markers on the walls. His business ethics was second to none, which gained him the respect of the automotive community. Most of his spare time was devoted to fishing with his family aboard his yacht in the Bahamas, or spent on the dirt track. The owner of Tampa Bay Motor Works Incorporated, Ash Rabah, was originally from Chicago, where he finished a degree in biochemistry. Ash's success as a student was so much celebrated that his college thesis can be found in the Journal of Chemistry. After college, he became the youngest mobile oil independent dealer, and then he moved to Florida in 2005 to open his first used car dealership in Tampa. After six years, he expanded his business by establishing his second branch in Dallas, Texas. In an industry dominated by men for years, Martha Davis of MSM Automotive Sales and Service dared to break into its world, equipped with the knowledge she learned while growing up from looking at her father's work. He was a reputable car dealer around Dallas, and she tried to replicate that by staying true to her mantra, your word is your bond. Her brother also provided her with tips on buying and selling used cars. J.D. Cole, also of MSM Automotive Sales and Service, is a third-generation car dealer, as his mother, Martha Davis, along with his grandfather, provided him with the necessary knowledge on how to go about the automotive industry. While he started in the business alongside his mother, Martha knew when to cut the strings so her son could thrive on his own. While he would head butts with his mother now and then, respect and love were evident between the two. They might share the same garage space for practical reasons, but they have separate business entities. Since the series featured bidding for vehicles, Andy Dunning played the crucial role of auctioneer. Each episode started with the car dealers trying to outbid one another, with Andy making sure that they would all feel the competitive spirit. He would spit out witty commentary and even pit them against each other just to get a higher price. More often than not, the dealers were triggered by his antics and bid higher than they originally planned because it turned into a pissing contest instead of focusing on the potential of the vehicles that were on the auction block. Dallas Car Sharks gave a different spin on auto customization such that regular folks could easily relate to it. Instead of looking at dream cars with expensive spare parts, the show focused on more affordable cars and was certainly one of the main reasons why it gained a loyal following. The first episode was aired on the 23rd of July 2013 on Motor Trend Channel and ran for about 30 minutes. From the get-go, it was quite obvious that those four car dealers knew a lot about one another, as each of them planned their bidding strategies before going to the auction house for the first episode. 
everyone was aware of what the others would be itching to get from the auction block, Ash wasn't really interested in any of the vehicles that were being auctioned that day. He only went there to provoke the other bidders, most especially Tommy, whom he was quite sure would go for the big monstrous truck. JD knew that his mother was hell-bent on getting the Thunderbird, so he made the bidding competitive. Tommy at $25,000 and Martha at $4,800 paid more than they intended to just to get their hands on them. JD spent about $4,500 for the Camaro that he took home. It was plain to see that all of them were quite focused on how to make easy bucks by fixing the vehicles in the swiftest possible time without really prioritizing high quality, although it didn't mean that they were repaired with substandard skills. Unlike other automotive restoration shops in which they meticulously looked for the best possible option to be used in restoring the vehicle, the goal in Dallas Car Sharks was just to make the car look presentable enough to lure buyers and ensure it ran smoothly so that car enthusiasts with smaller budgets could afford to buy them. Before the episode ended, Martha sold the restored Thunderbird for $8,500 and earned close to $3,000 after subtracting all the expenses she spent on it. JD sold the newly painted Camaro for almost $9,000 and earned a profit of $2,500. Lastly, Tommy earned the highest profit of $8,000 that episode by flipping the pickup truck for $35,000. Since it was only a 30-minute show, everything was fast-paced, from the bidding process to the fixing of the vehicles. The actual flipping of the cars wasn't shown, but was only narrated to give the viewers a picture of how much they earned for the restoration projects. With a plethora of car-related reality TV shows airing on both mainstream and cable channels, it was a pleasant surprise for the people in the Motor Trend Network that Dallas Car Sharks attracted a huge chunk of viewers in its first season. They ordered two more seasons from AMS Studios, and in those three seasons, lots of controversial issues surfaced online about the TV show. Here are just some of the most talked about. When car enthusiasts and fans of the automotive-related TV shows talked about Dallas Car Sharks in the online community forums, the general consensus was that the TV show was the worst of the worst when it came to being scripted. Many said that there was totally nothing real about it. The bidding process was obviously staged, even if it was done at a legit place, such as the Texas Lone Star Auction House. And the fact that they never showed the actual reselling of the restored cars was in itself quite dubious. The audience was only told how much each of them earned at the end of the episode. It could be because the producers were cutting down the production cost or were too lazy to even stage one. But the most logical reason was that the vehicles weren't resold. People became highly suspicious of the way the cars were initially auctioned, as they looked unbelievably terrible. Most viewers thought that the production crew had made it that way to create a certain narrative. While some cars may have come from barnyards or unkempt garages in real life, owners would clean them up first so that they could lure buyers to bid for them. Or if those cars were owned by the auction house, it was only logical to present them properly to increase the price. The fans found it quite funny and ridiculous at the same time. Fans criticized the way Mother Martha and Son JD oftentimes tried outbidding each other during the auction process. Initially, it was entertained to see that JD loved to tease his mother, but doing it many times over and having your mother spend more money than she needed to was plain stupid. People were expecting JD to somehow protect his mother from the other bidders, instead of making it difficult for her by playing along with the other bidders. The premise of the show was that the car dealers would bid, fix, and then flip the vehicle for a profit. So it was frustrating when a 30-minute show spent more time showing scenes not related to auto restoration. For instance, when JD and Ash both took home Corvettes, there were plenty of scenes dedicated to how the two raced their cars after fixing them, and then bid on them. It wasn't as if they were professional or even amateur racers to get the audience excited. Many viewers became unhappy that they never got to see longer actual restoration footage, and it was for this reason that people doubted that each of the cars chosen to work on in the show was really in need of fixing. There were times viewers noticed that some parts of the car were duct taped. They couldn't find the reason for it, and were left wondering if it was because they were hiding something from the discerning eye of some of the car enthusiasts. Having a lawsuit filed against a TV show wasn't a rare occurrence, as it was known to happen even before reality TV shows became a huge thing. In the case of Dallas Car Sharks, its production company, AMS Pictures, received a legal complaint when they were in the middle of airing the second season. The Dallas Morning News reported that a certain Bruce Kahn claimed that he was the one who conceptualized the idea of having car dealers in Dallas bid, restore, and flip cars, exactly as the premise of Dallas Car Sharks. 
Allegedly, he talked to the executives of AMS Pictures and pitched the concept in 2011, even pointing out certain local car dealers in the area who would be perfect as members of the regular cast. Mr. Khan also claimed that he had only pitched his concept because the AMS official verbally agreed that he could co-produce it and enter into a profit-sharing scheme. He was even the one who came up with the possible TV show title Car Sharks. Later on, he was told that AMS Pictures didn't want him to co-produce and that they were not amenable to any profit-sharing scheme. He told them that it was okay and that he would just pitch his concept to another production company. However, he was shocked when AMS stole his idea, produced a TV show, and even used the name he came up with. When Andy Streetfeld, CEO of AMS Studios, was asked about the lawsuit, he said that he didn't know of any Bruce Kahn and that he wasn't aware of the allegations, but that he would comment after he talked with his lawyers. For a TV show to be hailed as one of the few that helped the network gain a better trajectory on its viewership ratings during its debut year, it was a big surprise that the network executives chose to axe it after airing its third season. Since the cable network never offered an explanation as to its cancellations, fans discussed online the possible theories as to why it ended. During the end of the first season, the cast, crew, and executives associated with the TV show were ecstatic about its TV ratings, which were positively high, and so they immediately ordered another season, thinking that its popularity would continue to increase. Somewhere in the airing of the second season, many negative things happened that affected the show's trajectory. The lawsuit that was filed against them became newsworthy and gained momentum in social media. If Mr. Khan's allegations were proven, then AMS Pictures and Muda Trend would naturally pay huge money for the damages that he incurred because of it. It also didn't help that viewers seriously doubted the show's integrity. Being mostly from the car enthusiast community, fans were more discerning of what they watch on their screens during the second season of a show. A new show would mostly get a pass if some of the episodes in its first season were filled with not-so-great footage, bloopers, or illogical narrative. However, during the second season, they would scrutinize each episode closely, and unfortunately, most of them found the show ridiculously scripted. They never put the blame on the main cast, as they were hired as talents, and oftentimes only acted out what they were instructed to do. Most fans believe that the Dallas Car Sharks was only renewed for the third season, because the executives thought that the show would pick up again, if they tweaked it a bit, and were mindful of the issues thrown at them. However, the decline of the viewership ratings continued, and they didn't have any choice but to end it. It was the only way to stop the bleeding of expenses at production cost. If there were fewer viewers, it would mean fewer subscriptions and fewer advertisements, and that would ultimately mean less revenue, or worse, a negative profit margin. Business above all else in the TV industry. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.